you ever look at your life day by day and feel like it's on a track? Like you're doing the same exact thing every day. Nothing ever changes. Nothing else is new. You have really nothing to look forward to. You don't really see a future and you see yourself, you know, living the same life for the rest of your life. Um, that's exactly how I felt the past, I want to say five or six months now. And uh, it's definitely time for a change. Um, you ever feel like that in life usually means that something needs to change. Otherwise, you just keep getting yourself more down and down and digging yourself in a deeper hole. Um, the title the title of this video is correct. I am going to be uh, stepping down from Depop, um, but it's for a good reason. So a little backstory. Uh, I started doing this about a year ago um, as a side job, as most people usually do. Uh, a couple extra bucks here and there, you know, some spending money, some fun money. And uh, quickly it evolved to something really good. I had a lot of fun doing Depop. Um, you know, met a lot of new people on the internet, at least, uh, met a few in person, um, built a lot of connections, made a lot of money and, uh, taught me a lot about life, business relationships, and, um, you know, just who I am as a person in general, uh, don't want to solely give that up to Depop, but, um, you know, reselling itself was a part of that and helped me, you know, help form who I am today. Um, but with that being said, over the, you know, few months after, over the first few months, you know, started building up pretty quick. So then COVID-19 hit. I don't want to blame it on that because that's not really what it was. Um, the first quarantine or first lockdown that we went through, um, I actually saw some of the highest sales I've ever had in my life because number one, people were spending their stimmy checks on clothes, online shopping, as everybody else usually does in life. And uh, the fact that everybody was cooped up inside and had nothing to do besides sit on their phone, which they would see stuff for them to buy from my page. Um, but around that time, Depop itself had changed their algorithm. It had changed the way that uh, posts would pop up on the timeline um, and on people's feeds. And, you know, they claim front to back, I guess the people that we talked to, as me as the top seller talked to, um, claim front to back that it was strictly had to do with the where the world was, COVID-19, um, the state of the financial, or the financial state of most Americans um, and people from overseas. I don't know how it was in Canada or anything like that, but, um, you know, they swore that that's what it was. It wasn't the algorithm change. But a lot of us top sellers, I want to say almost all of us, we knew. We, we knew we could tell the difference between the amount of sales that we would get. Um, or they would say, you know, it, it's a it's a slow month, you know. This month's a slow month. So I said, okay, you know, let's wait a little bit. As time went on, sales kept declining. Remember I used to wake up to sales, like at least three or four sales. I used to wake up to offers, three or four offers, every single morning. And that was, you know, for a couple months. That stopped happening. I mean, I'd be lucky if I woke up with a message in my inbox, somebody asking to, you know, lower the price a little bit or do a bundle deal. It just it does, does, didn't, didn't happen. It doesn't happen anymore, you know? And uh, that's when you kind of knew something was up. So, um, you know, as the summer months went on, same exact thing, sales were down. No matter how much I put out, no matter how many pictures I took, my photo style stayed pretty much the same. Um, maybe I was a little bit inconsistent with how much I posted, but um, at the same time, sales kept declining. So either, I mean, it was me, which I don't think I really changed too much, or it was the app itself. Now, they just roll out a second modification to the search algorithm, um, along with the DNA change and the explore page change. And every single, almost every single top seller I know has said, sales have been plummeting. People have actually had to consider getting regular jobs, going from reselling full-time to getting an actual job, which some of you might think, you know, oh, what's, what's so bad about that? So you work really hard for something and you, you know, grinded and grinded and grinded and nothing's to show for it. It's pretty discouraging. Um, so I, it, it's just time for me to be done. So before I make this statement, I want to make sure that it's known that it has nothing to do with the Depop employees, owners, application, manufacturers, or anything like that. Um, but the entire stigma built up around that app is to compete, which is good because it gives you motivation. But at the same time, it is to compete in a manner where you almost feel like a robot. Um, that's how I felt, you know, pump out as much stuff as possible, get as much stuff listed as possible, get as much stuff moved as possible, which is cool and all, but at the same time, my favorite part of it was the hunt, going out and finding these pieces. And when you have to compete to be at a level um, of most other top sellers, otherwise you're not going to make money, it takes the fun out of it, you know, wake up, go source, come home from sourcing, wash your inventory, uh, you know, picture your inventory, list your inventory, write the descriptions. Um, make sure it's consistent each day. Put it on a clothing rack or put it in a bin. Someone gives you a low ball offer. Someone gives you a crappy offer. Someone asks to do a bundle deal. You make that deal. 
You package stuff up, you slap a label on it, you bring it to the post office, you wake up the next day, you source inventory. I mean, for some people that's fun, and I get that. And for some people it's a good rush, you know, um, they enjoy the hard work of it. But for me, it was extremely dissatisfying and I was, I mean, quite frankly getting fed up with it. Um, I did feel like a robot and to have to compete, I had to, you know, basically get as much stuff as possible. Um, I wasn't able to curate as much as I wanted to. I wasn't able to handpick and select as much stuff as I wanted to. Um, I gave it a broad spectrum of vintage and I started grabbing whatever I can find, you know, um, almost like, uh, what's a good way to reference it? Um, quantity over quality. And that's not what I was about in the beginning. And that's what it turned me into. Um, so with that being said, what I've decided to do in a whole is like I said, first off, take a step away from Depop, but something even more exciting. Um, so some of you may or may not know, my sister passed away in a car accident. Um, I should say was killed in a car accident on April 26th of 2020. Um, and my grandfather died, uh, in July of 2020. So with that being said, um, going through those experiences alone has, you know, really brought to my attention that life is so, so, so short. It is too short to be worried about anything. Um, obviously be sensible in life, but, um, all the small stuff that I worried about on a day-to-day -day basis didn't matter anymore. You know, any fear that I had for myself and my future didn't exist anymore. Um, fear of death, did, I mean, doesn't bother me at all, uh, to be quite frank with you. I mean, maybe in this situation, if I was, you know, somebody had a gun in my face, it'd be a different story, but, um, going through that kind of stuff really toughens you up and makes you open your eyes to what really matters in life. And, um, you know, with that being said, I just want to be free and do what I want because I'm not going to let anything or anybody get in my way and tell me what I'm going to do. Um, or how I should live my life. And that goes for anybody. If there's something you do want to do or don't want to do, do or don't do it. Like, it doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what if this, or, you know, what if that, or, oh no, what if I, what if, take risks, enjoy life. You could die tomorrow. If you're dead tomorrow, would you really, you know, how, what would you think about yourself if you didn't do what you wanted to do, you know? I'm not going to wait till I'm 60 when I retire with my 401k and my wife and four kids that you know went to college or didn't go to college. Uh, one of them's a drug addict, one of them's a lawyer. You know, I'm not gonna wait till then to enjoy the rest of my life. I'm gonna do when I want to, I'm gonna do it now. So with the, you know, mood from being locked up or on lockdown, um, you know, everybody being pushed away from each other due to politics and COVID-19 and stuff like that, along with two really close deaths, I've had a really shitty year. Um, really the only good thing about this year, I feel like, is um, the fact that I have built up a business and um, thrived off of it. Uh, it feels pretty rewarding, but um, in the end, I ended a, a relationship that I really wasn't happy in. Um, and now I'm at the point where I wanna be free, I wanna spread my wings, and I wanna do what I want. I'm, I'm gonna do something that I've wanted to do for a long time. So I am going to buy a van. I'm looking at a conversion van. Uh, I'm going to gut it out completely and turn it into a house or a travel vehicle on wheels. I really don't like the term van life. I feel like it sounds too cliche. Um, you know, I'm not going to be one of those, you know, wake up on the California coast with the, you know, sun, sunrise and the cool salt mist, you know, ocean in my air. I'm not going to, it's not going to be like that. Um, you know, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this to travel. I'm doing this to meet people. I'm doing this to, uh, build new fun experiences as well as make some money on the way. So, um, like I said, taking a step away from Depop, um, all my stuff is still for sale up until May. I'm going to lot all of it out, uh, in wholesale or raffles or bids. Um, or auctions, I should say, not raffles, I'm sorry. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna focus on bangers and wholesale. So if any resellers are watching this and they need wholesale for their shop, DM me on Instagram, at Nick Vintage. I've already sold at least five or six wholesale boxes in the past, uh, what was it? Two weeks to some pretty big top sellers. And we're talking like 20, 30 items a piece. So there's no limit to how much you can spend. Um, Obviously, it's all up to you, your budget. Um, depending on what you want to look for, we can work on that and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm going to be doing this completely from the road. I'm going to be reselling from the road. This channel itself will be based on, um, you know, van life videos, the journey of me building the van um, up to my home, as well as um, thrift stuff added in there because I want to bring the fun back to reselling. Like, you know, bring the motivation and bring the the burn, the hunt, the hunger back. I want, I want that all back. And um, I want it in a way where I can do it freely and travel. So I'm gonna focus on items that are worth probably $200 or more. I'm not gonna mess with the sweaters and the granny sweaters anymore. I'm not gonna mess with trying to sell, you know, a $20, $20 t-shirt, $10 t-shirt, like that's all in the past. Um, you know, if you wanna do that, that's all up to you. 
go for it and thrive, but um, that's just my plan. So um, stay tuned for a lot more content. I'll be pumping up videos at least once a week, uh, whether it be thrift related or van related. But um, if anybody wants to link up, any tips that you can give me on um, living in a van and uh, any wise words, drop them down in the comments. But until then, uh, thanks for everybody's support and thanks for everybody's, um, you know, subscribing to me on YouTube and Instagram and stay tuned for more content.